Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to Meta Whatever the Hell Day I Feel Like Recording This. This one's gonna be a little bit shorter. Uh, I do wanna keep the ones that aren't like, you know, super like right after a big expansion. I'll keep them a little bit more brief, more update-like. Whereas I've decided that, you know, when I do a meta report on like the first week after any sort of big change, big balance patch or big expansion, I'll try to make those ones more thorough. Those will be like the 30, 40 minute ones. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is my kind of like weekly air quotes, uh, meta report. Uh, and we're going to be discussing what has changed in the last week, what decks are good and what decks are kind of underperforming. All right, before we begin, you're going to want to check out the, the link in the pinned comment because that'll take you to the site where everything is updated. I'm not monetizing the site in any way. It's this is just a resource for you guys to, uh, you know, help you guys stay more updated on the meta. Okay, and you're also, you know, you should check it out too, because if you want to import the decks into your, you know, your deck list on your game, then you then you import them through here, because here's, there are all the decks and you've got the codes. Great, that take was amazing. We're leaving it in. Okay, guys, here we go. So starting from the top, this is your meta this week. So we still have kind of like these four core decks being kind of the tier one Titans this time around. Ezreal, Burn, Plaza Scouts, TF, Go Hard, Field of Rush Control. Plaza Scouts having a kind of insane 58% win rate over a large sample size. Fiora Shen actually joins these guys at the top. It's been kind of hovering for a little while, a very high win rate, deceptively, and manages to, you know, claim a bit of a tier one to itself. Right now, there's always going to be a niche in the meta for, you know, a, a deck that's running Deny, and it is competing with Lee Zoe combo. There's a chance that Lee Zoe will be coming in to dethrone that, but, you know, we're not really sure. Butterfly Fiora is also a deck that's performing very well. Now, I actually didn't cover Butterfly Fiora in my last meta report because I made the deck, I think, right afterwards, maybe the day or day, and like two days after. Um, if you've been watching the videos on this channel, you've probably seen a lot of this deck. It's a new deck that actually has a pretty high win rate, and I'm happy to list it in tier two here. I was actually kind of like worried that the win rate would fall off, but it's doing very well. Invoke Plaza is a new deck that we'll talk about. Coming in on tier two, if you're looking for a Plaza deck that's running Targon, this is a different take at that, and the one I would recommend the most. And then I'm even like working on a Targon TF combo. That's a little bit new as well. And there's a chance, you know, that this is a bit experimental. I, I've, I have a guy listed pretty low here. So, you know, don't don't hold it to any standards. But I think that it'll definitely uh, grow some legs. So overall, there's actually a lot of changes being happening in the meta. Okay, first off, let's go ahead and cover tier one decks. the kind of like trendsetters of the meta right now. And then we'll jump into kind of some of the newer decks. I'm not going to go through every deck in tier two. In some of these kind of like shorter, just more updatey, you know, not right after a big patch videos. Okay, so Ezreal Burn comes in, very powerful deck at a 56%. As you notice, this deck actually hasn't been updated in four days. This is still the version I would recommend. This is a really a deck that does not see much change. There's some people that still don't like running Ballistic Bot, but I prefer the version that does. I mean, you guys know how this deck plays out. It's a controlly deck. You have like maximum damage and you kill, you know, damaged units until you inevitably win with Captain Fraun. Then coming up on its heels, Plaza Scouts also a 56% win rate. Bit of a trend there as we see, you know, the good decks will have very similar win rates. Uh, we have switched back to the Quinn version. The Garen version actually has a really similar win rate, but overall the Quinn and just kind of like the aggro blowout potential is definitely going to be a little bit stronger here. Okay, then we've got TF Gohard coming in at a 54% win rate, a little bit lower. And my preferred version is actually running one gank blank right now, just because it helps, you know, when you're going into the later game, the ability for it to just be kind of a dominant powerhouse in like the like turn five, six, seven of the game kind of helps out more so than over committing to the early options I found. You guys don't need me to break out down how TF Gohard works as a deck for you because it's the only deck anyone's sitting on ladder and Anyway. But yeah, overall, TF Gohard actually has the lowest overall win rate out of any deck in Tier 1 here. The only reason I've listed it above the others is because it's got a much higher sample size than Field of Rush Control or Fiora Shen. It's a very good deck. It does kind of warp the meta around it. To be perfectly honest, I think it's sort of um, kind of like overstated. Its play rate in the meta is much higher than its effective win rate. 
And there's actually a decent amount of counters to TF Go Hard that not a lot of people are really playing. In terms of countering TF Go Hard, if that is your goal, and I have a ton of people ask me, Swim, how do you counter TF Go Hard? Your best bets are Field Rush Control is a very good counter to it. Overwhelm decks like Targon Overwhelm or Failure Overwhelm do very good against it. And Lee Sin decks tend to do pretty favorite against it as well. And speaking of one of the decks that was on my list, we've got Field Rush Control. Now, Field Rush Control, this is a complete anomaly to me, by the way. I just want to say, like, we, quick break, real real talk, Field of Rush Control. I have literally no idea why more people aren't playing this list. It is the lowest play rate out of any deck in Tier 1. I have kept this deck in Tier 1 for the past, like, two weeks since the expansion because it's still a Tier 1 deck. It still has the matchup tables of a Tier 1 deck. It still has the win rate of a Tier 1 deck. But for some reason... And, like, people were playing Field of Rush Control a lot before the patch happened. Like, like they were with GoHard, but for some reason now everyone's playing GoHard and no one's playing Field Rush Control. Makes no sense. Field Rush Control has a higher win rate. It counters GoHard in the mirror. This deck is absolutely nuts right now. Play this deck. Like, it's nuts. It literally beats everything right now. It it, it actually does. Like, it beats it beats TF GoHard. Uh, I mean, Plaza Scouts don't really have matchup tables. This deck is about whether they nut draw or not and, like, they win or not based off of that. Um, it beats Ezreal Burn. It beats TF Go Hard. Like, Field of Rush Control is just an absolutely crazy deck that, for some reason, nobody's playing. Anyway, just to actually, like, real quick do that, you know, rundown. Uh, the deck hasn't really changged much. Uh, we've taken out the uh, Avaros and Trapper because that was... Avaros and Trapper was kind of a temporary meta attack for a meta with stuff like more, you know, beef matchups, more Ash Knocks, more Fearsomes. We don't really have as much of that flying around kind of like tavern keeper is going to hit this meta quite a bit more if that stairs this is a sweet tool added in this deck by my boy precipic and it's actually doing a ton of work in terms of clearing out you know those favored matchups it starts to dominate matchups like tf go hard because it just smashes their entire board pretty good against ezreal burn that often has like you know kind of a wide board in that way as well so feel the rush control i don't i might have forgotten to mention 56 percent win rate so it's actually this yeah no i did mention that same win rate as ezreal burn and plaza scouts a uh, very good deck lower play rate so less reliability but if you can play the control game plan this deck will work extremely well for you one tip if you're playing a mega control deck like this you have to be comfortable open passing it's gonna feel weird as like especially as like a new player or coming from other card games but when you're on like turn two and turn three turn four honestly like every turn in the game unless your opponent does something that threatens their open attack for value or you would be burning you know too much mana the trick with this deck is you really really need to just pass right like if you and your opponent have equivalent mana and you're threatening an equivalent mana burn if they pass back that's all that's basically always better for you unless your opponent has a good open attack next turn that you can't answer so you need to start pressing the space bar button really really aggressively and really really commonly with this deck make your opponent play first it's really hard to explain how big of a deal that mentality is for slower kind of controlly decks like ezreal burn or feel the rush control in this case the idea like think about it every single turn for the entire game you are playing an option that is just better information than your opponent like if your opponent has to play their card first every turn like let's say you each play one card each turn they play from a position of less information because they don't know what you doing and you play from a position of even more information because you can react to them it's absolutely a crazy advantage anywho back to the tier list we've also got fiora shen coming in at a 55 percent win rate in tier one it is a deck that also hasn't changed it's fiora shen what are you gonna do the deck you know it's 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 an old classic the deck don't change but right now in this meta nopify is amazing deny is amazing and it's kind of ironic out of you know there was some there was this craze with the grand plaza plaza is a good card it, it hits scouts and it hits like plaza invokes a deck i'll be showing off later but it's kind of ironic that outside of scouts which is sort of an anomaly because scouts is just a like a nut draw combo deck that uses plaza outside of that the best demacia deck statistically is running no plaza right crazy huh anyway right now in this metagame we just have this like just mass it's a critical mass of the value of Nopify and Deny right now. Like, they're just good against everything. Deny counters feel the rush control, which is going to be a lot more relevant when people remember this is a broken deck. Um, you know, Nopify counters TF go hard. Everything is spells in this meta right now, right? Like, we are in kind of like the most spell-heavy meta in probably the history of the game, actually. And, yeah, 
no no joke that i and opify they're kind of the only two reasons to be in ionia but hey that's all you need all right next up let's go ahead and talk about some of the newer decks coming up in the top of tier two because while tier one looks pretty similar to how it did last week tier two is shuffled around a really really large amount so if you might notice in the video it there's a bit of a continuity error because the the let's change a little bit there was a bug on the back end don't worry about it anyway at the top of tier two we've got lee zoe combo this is a phenomenal deck it's really really good right now the ability you know lee sin is basically back right zoe and sparklefly give lee sin as a deck so much of just exactly what it needed this is my personal current version of lee zoe and there's a couple minor variations some people run like you know two sonic waves some people run zero spell thief some people i've seen run like three sparklefly but i like all of the ratioing of this version personally um and i've played this list actually i haven't played it a ton since the expansion but lee sin is one of the archetypes that i'm pretty familiar with from before and it's just a phenomenal deck right now at a 55% win rate. A lot of you guys are going to ask, well, why are some of these decks the same win rates as some of these up here? And the answer ends up kind of always being sample size, or in some cases rounding, because I'm not giving you guys the decimals. And you'll notice a pattern because we've also got Tom Soraka. This is another super powerful deck. Literally hasn't changed a single card. Tom Soraka is always Tom Soraka. It will always be Tom Soraka. This is just what this deck is. It's a very powerful, like, kind of, like, control hybrid archetype that needs to play for the board and bank mana smartly. Now, Tom Soraka also has a 55% win rate. So right now, what I want, if, you, if I can say anything, if you guys take one thing from this video, right now, Ladder is in a really irrational state. There's some incredibly powerful decks that have really low play rates, and you as a Ladder player, if depending on what you're willing to play and what you're comfortable playing, you can definitely capitalize on these low play rates to get your, you know, get a very high win rate, right? So these three decks right now that are just bafflingly being played or bafflingly almost not being played at all, but have really high win rates and everything in the theory points to them being either tier one or top tier two are Feel the Rush Control, Lee Zoe, and Thomas Rocca. These are three decks that have just insane win rates. You'll notice all three of them are kind of tricky-ish control decks to play and definitely not everyone is you know wants that kind of play style but if you're open for it these are decks that i would highly recommend they'll do extremely well for you right now like a lot of these decks will be bashing a lot of the like high tier meta decks like tf go hard or scouts or burn two two out of three usually and personally these kinds of combo decks are i mean to me kind of the most fun like lee sin it's a deck that you know it was kind of everywhere for a while there was that like one and a half months where everyone was playing lee sin but i mean it's you know a lot of us are kind of tired of it from just that month but it is a fun deck it's a it's a pretty big brain deck overall you will have to make a lot of sick plays and yeah it's just super good in this meta right now all right then a little bit further down we've got targon discard aggro and butterfly flora both coming in at 54 percent now this deck if you've been following these meta reports in the site this has gone through a lot of versions this is currently what i feel like would probably be best for this kind of archetype but the identity of you know this kind of discard targon aggro or targon overwhelm oh i should also mention there was kind of a the thing before that was bugs it was it was listing targon overwhelm this is not overwhelm targon that's a kind of a different deck that uses darius instead but i think this deck is probably a little bit better it's a little hard to say with these because both of these decks aren't super high sample sizes but this one should be slightly better positioned and has arguably better stats although it depends how much we're weighing win rate versus play rate basically it's a super aggro deck think of it kind of like the pnz version of you know discard except we're using spacey sketcher starry scamp zoe and crescent guardian instead as our tools and zoe is actually pretty scary in this deck so the jury is still you know not out on whether it'll be uh, you know, whether it ends up being better than the Jinx version, but it actually performs very well this week. And also, as I mentioned, at a 54% win rate, we've got my very own Butterfly Fiora deck. This is just a, a, a deck that I personally love. You'll notice I haven't changed it in the last week because, you know, most of me playing this deck was a week ago, and I currently have no changes I would make to this deck. But overall, it's an all-in combo deck. Again, you probably are familiar with this deck if you watch this channel at all, but very fun deck to play you have to do a lot of cool hand reads um and it's all about just maintaining reactivity and having counters to anything the opponent could do because if you keep a fiora or a spark of light on the board and they can't kill it then you win and that's kind of true for pretty much every matchup like i guess feel the rush is a matchup that can beat you through a, a spark of fly that you keep alive but 
Yeah, no, I mean, you, there's no deck that can really beat it if you can keep it buffed for several turns. And that's kind of the top of tier two right now. So I got to say, I really do love kind of where we're headed. There's a lot of like these kind of like very high skill ceiling combo decks like Butterfly Fiora, like Tom Soraka, like Lee Zoe combo. And these are the decks that are creeping up on the heels of tier one. There's actually a good chance maybe, you know, next week, if people, more people are playing Lee Zoe combo, it could easily, you know, get a bit of a play rate spike. And there's a very good chance it could dethrone Fiora Shen. They could kind of switch places because, of course, running Deny and Novify is just really good right now. Next up, we've got Invoke Plaza. Also a bit of a new one. Check this out. Now, there's a lot of Plaza Targon decks. This is personally my current favorite for uh, Plaza Targon. Now, there's Plaza Targon with, like, Garen and Asol, which had like the most play rate it was an extremely popular deck to play it never had a super high win rate it was always like 53 52 percent um and there's like leona versions like I've, I've gone through like four different plaza targon versions at this point and this i think just takes the cake plaza is really really great with the targon allegiance invoke like mountain scryer and starry scamp package when you play these starry scamps for zero mana they just work so beautifully with how plaza works as a card and Plaza really helps, you know, the win condition of this kind of grindy value-based archetype come together in a very powerful way, especially things like, you know, Solari Sunforger. We've just got so much synergy with Plaza, and I think people realize that the Targon cards are just kind of better than the other Demacia cards, so yeah, just run the other Targon cards, keep it to Plaza. Now, overall, this deck isn't played a ton. In fact, it doesn't even have enough of a sample size to really officially have a win rate right now, so it's still, you know, I mean, I can't say for sure whether this will be the new deck, and I can't guarantee you it will be the best, uh, you know, Targon Grand Plaza deck moving forward. I feel, you know, it, it's very likely the case. It, it should be better than most of them, and, you know, people have have been playing it to very good results but it's still a little too new so we can't you know we, we we do have to be a little cautious about this one i'd highly recommend trying this though if you've been trying plaza targon decks it's a different approach or if you've been playing you know invoke mountain scryer decks because a lot of these decks have been splashing like shadow isles for atrocity and i think that the grand plaza version ends up being kind of a better version of both of those archetypes and that's kind of it for what I want to cover in this video. Not a lot past that in terms of kind of like this cluster in tier two has really changed overall. You know, I'm just covering like the tier one and the high tier two decks right now, but I'll show you guys a little sneak peek of something I'm working on. Like I said, this is kind of like a bit experimental. It's performed very well for me so far. I don't know if it'll be better than like Lee Sin Zoe, but TF Zoe was uh, kind of doing a very, very good job on ladder for me earlier today on my stream. And this is a deck that I'm gonna be working on refining over the next few days on my stream. It'll be a lot of fun. And I think it's definitely something that's safe to put in tier two, um, super solid win rate for now. I might end up removing it at a certain point if it ends up kind of turning into a worse version of another deck because you know it's very important to not just have decks that are omitted because they're too weak but you don't really want to recommend a worse version of another deck and as it's refined it's very possible i'll just always be wanting to have run Lee Sin instead but it's got a lot of potential and it's super cool seeing like even in like the what what are we like uh over two weeks into this patch now it's been about two weeks right I've lost all track of time, um, but there's still new stuff being experimented on. I can tell you right now, nobody's really solved this Targon Noxus aggro archetype. There's so many ways of building Targon Noxus aggro. I've gone through like five different versions on this site alone. There's like there, there's full on Darius versions. There's full on swarm versions. There's like semi burn versions like this with fervor and decimate. And a lot of them have like very good win rates. So there's a super competitive Targon Noxus at, like version out there. That's the best out of all of them. And we still, it's, it's, it, we, nobody has any idea exactly what it is. This is my best guess for now. So there's still a lot of ways the meta is moving forward. There's still a lot of ways it can move forward. And I'm very happy with this. I think a lot of people look at metas and they're like, oh, the tier one decks are the same. But you guys have to realize, like, the only reason these decks are tier two instead of tier one, all of these decks have the same win rates as the decks up here. The only reason they're different is because their play rate is too small to be, like, safely put in tier one because of course win rate and play rate are like we, we can't put a deck like having the same win rate doesn't matter if the play rate is quite a bit lower right because play rate ends up being sort of a tiebreaker i guess if you want to look at it like that there's a lot of complex math that goes into like win rate and play rate differentials that i'm not going to bore you with but and to be honest i'd have to kind of look it up because i can't 
exactly remember all of it off the top of my head. But anyway, that that that, that aside, there's a lot of shifts happening in the meta right now. Um, a lot more than I think a lot of people are giving it credit for. People are like, oh, the meta stale. There's a ton that's going to be happening like uh, in these tier two decks, in the upper tier two decks. And we're already seeing a lot of decks on ladder are, you know, changing in terms of what's seeing play and what's not. So it's definitely a very good meta. Great time to be a Runeterra player. All right. Anyway, that's my that's my meta report for this week. <laughs> a lot of fun. I'll see you guys next time.